So Michael Suka, he's the Assistant Treasurer and Housing Minister, interviewed him earlier. We'll be playing that interview in about an hour's time. He can barely contain his anger at the Andrews government as he struggles in the electorate of Deakin with hearing from constituents suffering through the lockdown. Suka mentions the, as he puts it, hotel quarantine debacle about 10 times in this interview. He mentions that he is in touch with businesses who have been built up over decades who are just finished because of this. And I also asked him his biggest fear out of the lockdown. I think most Victorians understand that uh, it's not just bad luck that has led to Victoria being the only state uh, in Australia to be in this position. Clearly, uh, the uh, hotel quarantine catastrophe uh, has led us to this point, and they're pretty keen to obviously get answers on that. I think naturally you ask the question is what have been the failures, what have been the local decision-making issues that have led us to this position. Uh, I'm frustrated. My heart breaks for uh, people that I have calling my office on a daily basis explaining to me that businesses they've spent decades building up uh, and are now probably gone. I fear about the long-lasting impacts of these things and that's why you know, the Morrison government's throwing the absolute kitchen sink uh, at trying to help Victoria get itself uh, out of the problems that have been created um, by the hotel quarantine failures. Uh, the sooner we're able to help Victoria out of that, the less likely that permanent damage will be there. So, um, you know, I'm doing everything we possibly can, um, but that fear of the permanent damage, I think, is the fear being felt by so many Victorians. Michael Suka saying during that interview that, well, you look at the facts. Every other state's virtually eliminated the virus and look at what we're left with. And it's all because of this hotel quarantine debacle. Different from the rhetoric we've heard from the Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Victorian ministers, the Treasurer Josh Frydenberg and Greg Hunt, who have tried to keep the peace with Victoria as they deal with what is essentially a national crisis. And we heard about that this morning with Scott Morrison saying what we are looking at because of the shutdown and then the lockdown in Victoria... 10 to 12 billion out of the national economy, a decline of 2.5% in GDP in the September quarter. That is very concerning, that is very troubling, but it is not unexpected. Um, in the circumstances, these measures will have a very significant cost and it will impact the recovery path. But the task doesn't change. We get on top of this issue in Victoria and we band together and we make this work. And we'll look at this clash between Daniel Andrews and reporters down in Melbourne very shortly. But the Prime Minister came there to acknowledge the mental health effects of the lockdown and pledge some money for some organisations there at his cybersecurity launch this morning. As for Mr Suka, he defends this federal government rhetoric that continues that JobKeeper has to remain a national program despite clear signs that Victoria is in uh, such a worse position than other states. Clearly, we've got a program, uh, one of the, not one of, the biggest program ever put in place um, by federal government uh, of its kind uh, that's going to end up supporting, in a global basis, um, more, more Victorians than any other state or territory. That makes sense because Victoria is now in a worse economic position because of the issues we find ourselves in. Um, I think that demonstrates quite clearly, Andrew, that the program, the JobKeeper program, and indeed any program that's a demand-driven one of this kind, uh, is, is absolutely designed the way it should and absolutely operating the way it should. Uh... The Minister also defending a slow uptake of the $25,000 Home Builder Grant program. The portals for the applications not even open in New South Wales and Victoria yet, despite the Prime Minister launching it on June 4. So the COVID Parliamentary Committee heard last week that just 124 applications, just 124 have been received for this program so far, and only in Tasmania and South Australia. Hardly the big stimulus yet that was announced in the Eden Monero by-election. Suka says the delay is about the fact payments do not occur until construction, construction is over a lot of the time on new home builds. But he also does not encourage the belief that surely the government will have to extend this scheme given the problems construction has past December 31. Yes, this has been a, a great pr program and it's been applauded by the industry and it's keeping uh, hundreds of thousands of people in jobs. And obviously, the more successful a program is, the more people request that it be 
extended and there's no doubt a lot of the industry have requested to me that it be extended on the basis that it's been so effective for them. But we'll wait and see, um, you know, what it's doing. Um, and, you know, we've got to be careful with all these policies that uh, they achieve our objectives. And the objective of this program was to keep hundreds of thousands of people in a job in the second half of this year when uh, the full impacts of COVID-19 were hitting the housing market. So we'll keep an eye on it. I think we maintain full flexibility, flexibility as we do with all of our programs, uh, but I don't think it's fair to characterise it as this will certainly or definitely be extended. But uh, there's no doubt that the scheme's been so successful that there's a lot of uh, advocacy coming to the government asking for us to, to um, extend it because it has been so good for the industry.